Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now September 9th of 2020 and ever since the very end of the Skywalker saga, a lot of fans around the world have been very intrigued about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, you name it, and exactly what they are all set and ready to do for this new Star Wars universe in the next couple of years. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the one thing about Disney Star Wars is that, yes, we do know that they are now finally heading in a more positive direction, given that George Lucas, Jon Favreau, and Dave Filoni are all working together as a team to deliver as much authentic material as possible. When we go ahead and take a look at the process of developing the sequel trilogy, there's been a lot of problems with those movies. There's no doubt, there's no doubt about that. I mean, when we look at Episode 7... This was a movie that really opened the gateway to possibilities for episode 8 and 9 at the time. It was a movie, in a sense, that really opened our imaginations as to exactly what 8 and 9 had to offer. And of course, when The Last Jedi released back in December of 2017 by Ryan Johnson is when the backlash began for the overall Star Wars franchise, right? And that's when a lot of people began to believe that episode 9 was just not going to deliver. You know, the first major signal is when Kathleen Kennedy fired the original director and writer Colin Trevorrow, who was going to do a more true version of Star Wars than what we got in The Rise of Skywalker. And that brings us all the way over to the character of Rey and her lineage and actress Daisy Ridley and what it means all behind the scenes over at Lucasfilm and why there's been a lot of conflict between Ridley and Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy and more out there. So, what's really intriguing about all of this is, of course, with the Skywalker saga now over, both Disney and Lucasfilm have been developing their new Star Wars universe as well as their new trilogy of films in order to create a better and brighter future for the Star Wars franchise. Now, it's explained that behind the scenes, during the production of The Rise of Skywalker, there was a ton of trouble on handling the character of Rey in the film by director J.J. Abrams. It's said that Kathleen Kennedy was the one responsible for making major changes to Rey's lineage behind the scenes by cutting out tons of, of course, sequences for the character of Rey and deleted scenes that involved different takes on Rey's lineage. At one point in time, Rey was even considered to be a descendant of a Kenobi and that there was an original scene that took place within the Lake of Dreams at the Lost City that was shot over at Pinewood Studios in the UK. Now you guys may recall we talked about this a little over a year ago of the Lost City. This was actually supposed to take place underneath the world, underneath the surface of the world of Pasana. And underneath that world, the actual surface, would lie an ancient Jedi city hence the Lost City, and it would even lead to a specific, more Force-sensitive spot called the Lake of Dreams, where Kenobi would appear. And that brings us to one segment that Daisy Ridley worked very hard on that was deleted, that really caused a lot of conflict. This entire scene was shot with both Ridley and Ewan McGregor, and that the scene took roughly one whole month to film on and off in between breaks, where eventually Kathleen Kennedy pulled the plug on this take of Daisy Ridley in the new Star Wars film at the time. Daisy Ridley was said to have been very upset and angry at the fact that Kathleen Kennedy deleted the entire scene between herself and Ewan McGregor. Now, the original plan was to use some CGI work on Ewan McGregor, where his hair was dyed as white hair on set, where he was going to portray the Alec Guinness version of Obi-Wan as best as possible. Though the CGI technology was very difficult to use and establish, Kennedy saw this as the actual moment in time of consuming that she did not want to deal with such an issue for The Rise of Skywalker. Now, during this time, the title of the film was still undecided, and that the film's title was going to be geared toward the galaxy in general. The Ray Kenobi scene that was shot on set at Pinewood was said to have had the best practical effects for the sequel trilogy, and that Kathleen Kennedy was the one who had issues with Ray being a Kenobi, believing that it would be too obvious and would actually not gain a ton of fan interest, and that it was way too obvious for the fans to even figure out, given the hints laid out in Episode 7 after her vision sequence. So here's the thing about this, in case you guys uh, haven't, you know, have missed it, I'm sure that you haven't, but here it is anyway. You know, in The Force Awakens, during that vision, we have that moment, that key moment in the film, where Rey actually begins to hear all these voices. You know, she begins to hear Obi-Wan Kenobi in the distance saying, Rey, these are your first steps, 
and then it progresses to her meeting Maz Kanata. That was J.J. Abrams' original layout for the character of Rey to really make her descendant of a Kenobi, and that they even considered this in Episode 9, and even filmed an entire scene for this within the Lost City, that was really going to be quite something that Kathleen Kennedy decided was not very well fit for the movie. Now, the thing that I think a lot of fans missed the point on is that Kennedy actually lied to fans. There was an interview, I believe it was back in 2018, uh, maybe the very end of 2018, like November or December, it was right around there, where she actually said that, you know, uh, we're planning on Rey's lineage to be quite something that will be very much unexpected. This is right around when the first phase of reshoot started. Then in a later interview, I would say around maybe the middle of 2019, sometime after the release of the big trailer at Star Wars Celebration, where we got to hear Palpatine's laughter and all, that is exactly when she actually was in an interview saying that Palpatine was always in the cards since 2014, which was complete, you know, completely just out of line and just did not actually, you know, meet the fans' interest. They knew that Kathleen Kennedy did not mean that and that she was essentially lying to fans because J.J. Abrams contradicted that. He actually said that this was all last minute, this was a last minute decision, and Palpatine was thrown in the mix pretty much shoehorned in there. So moving on, the entire scene was going to be around 10 minutes long, diving deep into Rey's lineage as the granddaughter of Obi-Wan Kenobi, where they would actually leave other mysteries closed as to who Kenobi encountered that he had a daughter or son with that in turn brought Rey into existence. Now, Kennedy saw this as an opportunity to change things up by turning her into Rey Palpatine at last minute in order to make things less obvious for the fans, and figured that it would fix the damage done of Rey being so very powerful, with little to no training at all in the sequel trilogy movies. Now, the major change caused problems on set between Ridley and Kathleen Kennedy, and was something that the crew also had issues with behind the scenes, since it caused a major setback on production for the film. This was a main reason as to why there was no trailer during holiday of 2018. So here's the thing is that, you know, one major setback for this movie, and a lot of people tend to forget this, is that Kathleen Kennedy was the one responsible for deleting so many scenes that involved Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, the Dark Acolyte even featuring Matt Smith. Let's not forget, make no mistake, that Matt Smith really was going to deliver in this movie. It was going to be quite something new that we have never seen before on film. Basically, what they were toying with was the concept of Palpatine's spirit entering into the Dark Acolyte's body, and at this point in time, there were segments in which Rey was still considered to be a Kenobi. Of course, they went back and forth through all these different lineage choices, and that all eventually fell down to her becoming a Palpatine. Honestly, this just shows us, the fans, that Disney has no idea what they were doing at the time. They didn't really know exactly what to do. This really all was Kathleen Kennedy's fault at the end of the day. Again, The Mandalorian, you know, love it or hate it, I know that some people out there have different, you know, feelings about the show, but for the majority, most people actually view it as a positive TV show that's just a lot of fun. That proves that Disney can get something right with Star Wars. I think that Rogue One was another prime example. Even The Force Awakens was doable, at least in my book. Was it the best Star Wars film? Absolutely not. Was it doable? Yes, for sure, it was. Because it opened up the gateway to what 8 and 9 had to offer. Had 8 and 9 been more acceptable, I think that we, the community, would have accepted The Force Awakens in a better light. Because let's look at The Force Awakens. It really dropped all those hints as to exactly who Rey was going to become, what Luke Skywalker was going to be like. And let's not also forget that Kylo Ren's journey was a little bit teased in there as well. And they all kind of just shifted away from that concept. That was all because of Ryan Johnson and then J.J. Abrams tried to fix up the mess. So I think that when we look at Kathleen Kennedy here, given that she has no creative control now except for the Leslie Headland Star Wars TV series, it's a good thing. This just tells us that we are on the path to a better road for Star Wars. So with that being said, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know what think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.
nights and low 